What's up, everybody? Uh, not like it's breaking news. It's something I'm pretty sure everyone saw coming. Um, you know, the whole Josh Berry going to Stuart Haas next year, you know, fill the shoes. Well, the ride of Kevin Harvick, you know, um, I'm not surprised by just how he ran. Again, there's been rumors circulating for a while. And normally, at least in NASCAR and all that, you know, most of the rumors end up, you know, having some levity and some truth behind them. And really, honestly, I couldn't think it could happen to a more deserving individual. You know, um, if you see what he's done in his time in his racing career, just before he even made it to NASCAR, it's such a you know late age compared to a lot of people anymore. I mean, that's really old you know, for him to do it and, you know, for the team that he's going to, you know, he's a perfect fit for it. And, you know, something that they normally do minus a few things, you know, they're, they're like more seasoned human beings. I'll say, you know, that's, you know, they're older, they've been around longer. They don't put a lot, you know, into younger kids and he's in his thirties. So, I mean, no offense to him. He's not a younger kid anymore, but you know, his age is a perfect time because he has all the experience and, now he has, you know, good runs in the car. And, you know, they still could get a whole lot of good years out of him. Again, they normally, you know, go for the more seasoned guys. I mean, minus, you know, Chase Briscoe, who worked out, he has. You know, that's been okay. I mean, otherwise, look, Cole Custer didn't work out. I thought they called him up too early, and then his results really proved that. And, you know, no one can deny that. Uh, Daniel Suarez, when he was there, but he was just a seat holder. I don't really hold that, you know, against him. He was there just for that specific reason, which we've seen them do. Sadly, you know, Matty D did it a lot in his career in the Cup Series. Like, yeah, you get one more year. Why? Because we don't think he's ready yet. No matter what he did, he was out of the ride a bunch of times. But, you know, Suarez was young, didn't think he was ready. Priest is going to be 33. And he just finally got the ride. So, you know, getting to do it full time, finally, first time at 32. You know, he's an older soul, been around a lot. Deserved the ride sooner, in my opinion and a bunch of other people's opinions. Um, and look how Danica worked out as well. We go to young drivers. They pushed her image up as quick as they could through all the series. And she was nowhere near ready for the Cup Series. And look how it worked out. Not favorably at all for her, but they had the money and the backing. And, you know, that was a big thing. And, you know, if you look otherwise outside of them, I mean, Tony Stewart, obviously, when he bought in driving for the team, Ryan Newman, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, Eric Elmarola, Kurt Busch. I mean, it's really been established with uh, old seasoned drivers. You know, if we're going to make like a comparison to other things like F1, you know, we go to Ferrari, which was just older guys all the time. And that was really a lot of them, especially Ferrari until, you know, the Charles Leclerc move and, you know, all that. They were normally known for getting older, more serious, you know, experienced people. And Charles really fast. It's just, you know, the only thing I could have comparison wise, but they normally go for older guys. And Josh Berry, you know, fits that mold with the experience. Um, I think he has a calmer temperament, at least from what we've seen, than I would expect from a lot of the guys. I mean, no offense to Clint Boyer, Kevin Arvick, Kurt Busch, you know. Not like they've been known for being you know, the most pleasant people at times. Newman was impossible to pass. I mean, a lot of that, but it was very deserving. And I think he's going to fit in just good. And he's going to take advantage of this opportunity. But we look at the career of Josh, you know, Josh Berry. Started second. Yeah, this year we're just going to talk this year quick to start it because it's what everyone remembers. The All Star Open started second, led 46 laps, won the thing. That's something we all already knew going into it. A lot of people know that. But if we get into more of his career, the car's late model stock car tour 2015 through 2022, he had 56 races. He won 22 of them with 39 top fives, 30 top tens. Yeah, outside of that, individually. At least that's what came from Racing Info. Anyway, 16 poles, 1,800, led 1,870 laps out of the 6,600. He ran 2016 through 2019. He was top four in the final standings with one championship. Average start of 3.8, average finish of 5.6. He was running at the finish of 49 of those 56 races with 48 lead lap finishes. The car's pro late model tour, only four races, but one top five. All four races, he finished in the top 10. One pole, average start of fifth, average finish 7.3. He was running at the finish of all four of them, was on the lead lap for three of them. Which is still impressive, even at that many. NASCAR Kane and Pro Series East, three races, one top five, one top 10, average start 8.3, average finish 14.7. He's running at the finish of all three of them, two on the lead lap, 
Arkham Menard Series West, one race, one top 10, started 11th, finished 8th. Arkham Menard Series East, one race, started 7th, finished 2nd. Arkham Menard Series, one race in 2018, one in 2022. He got one top five. Both finishes were in the top 10. An average start of 6.5 and an average finish of 6th. And then we get to the ones that everyone gets to you know, actually see on a weekly basis just because the TV schedule, they don't have to move anything around. You know, there's a lot of other things that go into it. Craftsman Truck Series, one race in 2016, and then 10 in 2021. And 11 starts, obviously, one top 10, average start 19.4, average finish 16.8, running at the finish of 10 of them with seven lead lap finishes. Xfinity Series, 2014 through 2017, and then 2021 through 2023 in those races. 76 starts, five wins, 23 top fives, 44 top tens. A pole finished fourth in the championship 2022, average start of 13.4, average finish 13.1. He's running at the finish of 68 of those 76 races, which is mesmerizing, with 61 lead lap finishes. And then obviously cup starts, you know, two races in 2021. Eight and 2023, 20, you know, playing the fill in driver extraordinaire, and he did a fantastic job, minus that first race. So, when he was trying to figure it out, you know, he got like 10 minute notice. I don't hold that against him, but 2021 average start was 26 and a half, average finish 28th, running at the finish of both of them with one lead lap finish. And then this year, in the stuff we saw, one top five, eesh, damn near won that race in those eight races, three top tens, average start 25.8, average finish 18.9, running at the finish, all eight of them with five lead lap finishes. You know, he has good numbers across the board. Some of them, yeah. Like the trucks, we've seen people either really be good in the trucks and move on to the Xfinity and still look good. And there are people that, you know, just can't figure out the trucks, but they run good in the Xfinity stuff. Yeah, just because they're completely different beasts. So, you know, I don't hold that against, you know, a lot of people just because we've seen it. You know, it's just the way it is. They're a different beast to figure out. Um, but look what he's done in the Cup Series this year. I mean, and how many years he's been racing and all the stuff, like he fits the mold to be a perfect driver there. And I hope, you know, they give him a few years to prove himself. Yeah, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. And I think he is the right guy to do it. I mean, I really do. I mean, you know, if he's good enough to be Dale Jr.'s crew chief at North Wilkesboro, in what late model races, I believe it was, then I'm pretty sure that means he's probably knowing what he's doing. And again, the worst race out of things that you know, were out of his control. So he saw him almost win one of his worst races, that first one, because he had like two day notice. When he had, you know, full week to build up for it, he looked really good and almost won. So I, I think it's the right fit. You can let me know what you think in the comments or voice, you know, message through the anchor link or Spotify for podcasters, whatever it comes up as. I think it comes up Spotify for podcasters, but the link says anchor. Nothing I could do about that. They changed the company and all that, but. Yeah, you know, they changed the name, but they didn't change the link. Nothing you can do about it. But really do think it's a good call. There's other people I know Walter would have liked to see. There's some people I would have liked to see. But, you know, Josh Berry is, you know, the ideal fit. And he's earned it. And that's where I'm going to, you know, leave that one again. Let me know what you think in the comments somewhere. YouTube, Rumble, voice messages, like I said, comment on a link on social medias. But I think he's a perfect fit. And, you know, I'm excited to see what he can do. But he's just a good fit for the team and what they normally do. And I think he has the talent. Is he going to be Harvick right away? No. going to be Harvick at all? No, no one's going to be, but I think he's going to do a fantastic job. But thanks for watching and listening. Just wanted to do a quick one. Don't forget to check out all the socials. Racing with Jesse Rosinski everywhere except Twitter, which is Racing Rosinski. Don't forget to follow the sub stack. Check out all the sponsor links I put up on the socials. I appreciate y'all. And until we meet again, peace.